archives of Prasar Bharti presents the timeless treasure of golden era. Mr. Prime Minister, thank you very much for agreeing to meet me. I would like to uh, ask, you have been for 40 long years in politics, mostly in Karnataka, and now you have moved from Karnataka to Delhi. How are you liking this experience? You see, first of all, I would like to make myself clear to this nation and to the brothers and sisters of this country. My political career started in the year 1952. That is just about 19 years. Yes, my political career started the first election. Somehow, I entered uh, politics directly after my school days. I never expected that I am going to national politics. Whatever may be my family circumstances, I was confining myself to state politics. In 1947, as a student leader, I went to jail. Somehow, from that day onwards, for one reason or the other, I continued in state politics. My first active uh, role was in 1952, first general election, as a Congress humble worker. From that day onwards, I worked in various capacities as panchayat member, society member, chairman, as taluk uh, board member, as a legislative assembly, opposition leader, minister, party president, in various capacities. One thing I would like to make myself clear first to the brothers and sisters of my nation. I never have any planned way of political career. Let us be very frank. There is no plan. There is no design of my own. Whatever the circumstances that comes before me, I never used to shirk to shoulder the responsibility under the given situation. That's my nature. You took things in stride uh, in there, as to say. Basically, I am a philosophical man. You cannot expect anything, or you, by expecting anything, you cannot get it. Let us be very frank, unless you are distinct to get that or achieve that object. But when did you first think of being the Prime Minister of the country? Never, never in my life I thought over on these lines. For your kind information, through you, I would like to make myself clear to the nation. I never expected that I am going to become the Chief Minister of Karnataka. In 1962, I was forced to leave Congress. You know, Karnataka politics, even at that time, fighting with group rivalries. I was with A.J. Ramachandra. He was representing my constituency. And of course, I do not want to give those details. Pandit Jawaharlal Nehruji was here. And Sanjay, late Sanjay Reddy was the president of Congress. And Sri Nijalingapaji was the president of Karnataka Congress. So I was expelled actually from the Congress because of the circumstances. 
first day my name was cleared by the high command and then it was right again came back to the congress later no i will tell you and then again after three days it was modified so at that time on the day when it was cleared by the high command it was announced normally we started the work campaign work and subsequently after before with the door of the candidature again it was modified at that time my people and the workers compelled me to continue in the election for then i was suspended so that's how entry to the assembly itself is as a rebel congressman so as a rebel congressman when i enter the bar it is an undivided congress land can I, anybody expect that i am going to become a minister or a chief minister why i am giving you this on so it is just entering to the assembly is only with the compulsion of my party workers i was just 26 years at that day 26 completed 27 so when things further the situation develops when things come in circumstances for our against which made me to become totally committed or involvement to the problem of the people as and when things comes in whatever capacity i have worked as an mla as an opposition leader as chairman of various committees i always had one thing in my mind i used to give at most this thing value for the time whatever the the responsibility cost on me i never used to waste my time for any other extra curricular activities i never created even a single ugly scene in the assembly in my 30 years of political career 29 and half years i was there in the assembly never But did you like what happened in Parliament uh, during I, the last I, I, two that's sessions? Why, that's why so. I am coming to the point because I made certain preliminary remarks. Right. I never in my life, I am not a either an economist or a highly educated uh, educationist. But when was come. distinct to enter public life i try to maintain the decency dignity and decorum of the house i never used the no confidence motion the provision of the no confidence motion which is the right of the opposition to move a no confidence motion as the government has led to the opposition for 6 years never i used that weapon No, I always no Mr Prime Minister you are the leader of the house yes I'm no. just now coming to the point I came to parliament hmm. that was my experience hmm. early days right. my experience for the first time in 89 I was defeated for the first time what are maybe the reason there is no need for me to give <laughs> the explanation for that defeat within 18 months again i came to parliament that is the 18 months is a break in my life right i was sitting in the back bench in the parliament right i used to watch the performance you were here for about 3 and a half years so yes i used to watch mm. the proceedings very carefully right i met a participant in about uh, a dozen uh, occasion and whether in agriculture or in irrigation when senior leaders used to speak inside the house i used to closely watch i am very much a pained man today 
our forefathers who framed the constitution the amount of prominence or the importance given to this highest of its institution democratic institution it pains me to use this word we are not using the time in the proper for the proper job for the proper work for this i am not going to blame any one political party no but mr prime minister what and this what this, exactly i am just no i am no i am i am just coming to the point i shared my feelings in the business advisory committee in 1991 i was invited on behalf of the opposition i mean right. samajwadi party headed by chandrasekhar at that time i told this before all senior leaders how the timings of the house is going to be used but anyway my voice was feeble i will tell you very frankly I, under these circumstances can any one expect and venture to become the prime minister of this country i only pose this question that's all i want to make myself clear now right. never i went back to karnataka right. and i was forced to become the leader of the party where the party was given the mandate by the people of karnataka and i was there for 18 months i never even dreamt to come to national politics because my area was as i told you i never even dreamt earlier even to become the chief minister i entered assembly in under what circumstances i give you the brief background my whole object was when the people are given the mandate to me to run the state for 5 years i want to be there and serve my people to the best of my ability right. but 1996 the political scenario has changed two years earlier to this 11th lok sabha there was lot of debate discussion through media political pundits used to say there will be a hung parliament even a, a tallest man for the time being dr i mean former president of india mr venkat raman once said that's right the coalition era will begin in this country knowing this full well knowing this full well i will tell you very frankly i was preparing myself to send the maximum number of members from the janata dal from karnataka so that i can have my say at the national right. level for getting my due share to karnataka's development right. i will tell you very frankly right. people have blessed me in karnataka to get 16 seats that's correct have blessed me my whole object is to where we are lagging behind in the development area i wanted to see that in the new coalition government which was bound to come i should get my share due share to karnataka this was all right. my i used to tell this publicly right in the public platform but the will of god i would say the responsibility must trust upon you trust upon me how are you enjoying it now i will tell you i i don't say that it is it gives me any excitement or enjoyment i will tell you very frankly it worries me i will tell you very frankly when i see the picture of the whole country it is not an excitement or it is not a disappointment i am not a pessimistic person when i see the whole atmosphere 
starting from a morning janta darshan meeting several cross section of the people in this country or meeting several outside the delegates the various countries in why i'll tell you i feel rather very much worried with the problems of the nation or you over but mere the, worrying does not going to find a solution to the problem are you overwhelmed by the responsibility i is pretty heavy it is not the question of heavy for me a person like me who has no other extra curricular activities it is not a over burden for me but the where it worries me is can i able to solve these problems single handed is a, is an issue before me as a prime minister of this country but i will tell you very frankly today it does not when i say this it does not confine to any one political party in every political party today there is internal problems i could watch i could see nobody can dare say that there is no internal problems and more than 200 mps or new mps in this composition that's right that's right there are 33 or 34 parties whether it is a single man party whether it is the major political party like bajapa or the congress there are 33 political parties mr prime minister you Under have one problem you have one problem mm. your government is being backed by 13 parties some in the government some outside now doesn't it create a problem for you to manage this coalition government no that that that's where i was able to come yes in the house there are 33 political parties more than 200 people are the new entrants i am not going to say that there are no parliamentary the experience or the parliamentary background i am not going to say that in such a situation i was asked to shoulder the responsibility of the prime minister's ship as you now mention strictly speaking about nine political parties secular parties with 193 members elected me as the leader and congress has unconditionally expressed their support nobody went to congress to request them let me be very plain on this issue on 12th may before anybody any political party thought over what future course to be taken right the congress itself called its working committee and passed a resolution not to support bjp and not to form the government and support any third secular front comes to form the government to support but are you sure of the congress support will last for 5 years the tenure of the lok sabha are you very sure are you being very or you being too trusting i i am i may honestly tell you when i say this before my countrymen i don't think congress is going to betray you may pose a question to me they have done it in the past why? twice why no the past circumstances are different today's circumstances when i take a decision when i go on a right line it is congress is single largest party to support this government outside that's right with 140 seats 140 seats i don't think they will differ on the decisions which i am going to make there is no area of difference i'll tell you in one month in one month i'll stress upon this for the first time i called all the chief ministers that's right the chief ministers conference went on for 
two days. More than 15 hours I sat there. I heard the views of every chief minister. The agenda I myself drew as a prime minister of this country. I told my officers what should be the agenda. And your past experience came handy as yes. a chief minister. I gave the agenda to all the chief ministers. These are the issues to be debated in the chief ministers conference and come to some final conclusion. What is the agenda? Even after 48 years of independence, if you are unable to provide the drinking water, if you are unable to provide an all-weather road to a village to have the market access, to unable to provide a primary school, unable to provide the health facilities, unable to provide the housing, the benefit, roof to a roofless family, unable to provide the health care or the essential commodities, then what for? The very system of democracy should continue in this country. I lost this question. We have passed 48 years. We have implemented eight plan, but why five have, year plans. Why have the system failed to provide all these facilities I'm to the government? I am not going to say the system has failed. We have done something. We have done something. I don't say we have not done anything. But while spreading our resources for various items, naturally it becomes very thin. Or is it because of the indifference of the politicians no, to pe people's that. problems? Our ambitious programs, on all directions you want to channelize your resources, nothing can be completed in a time-bound program. It goes on dragging from plan to plan, plan to plan. I, with my little experience, try to identify the immediate task before the country is to provide the basic minimum needs. While finalizing the priorities, I gave thrust on seven items. It was placed before the right. chief minister. But they all man want money from the center. I will tell you. First of all, I am glad to say, in this complicated political atmosphere, all parties, whether it is Bajapa, whether it is Congress, whether it is Communist, whether it is DMK, Regional Para, Telugu Desh, all chief ministers unanimously adopted and accepted these priorities. And now the next thing is, I wanted to decentralize even certain powers. Right. I do not want to centralize. Okay. This was the demand of the states, not from today, even the co before the Congress split. That's correct. As if I am doing something new. No. I was telling about the outcome of the Chief Princess Conference. All of them unanimously adopted the minimum program that is identifying in the area of the priorities, seven items have been taken as the basic necessities to be common. Now about the funding, your good self has asked me a question. About funding, I have already taken the decision to convene the meeting of the Chief Ministers again in the month of August and what the money that has been indicated to each program that will be kept at the disposal of the states. I do not want to intervene. But how does it reach the people? It doesn't... I am, I am coming to the point. Now, the issue is whether that money is going to be spent for the purpose to which it is going to be allowed. Yes. I 100% rely upon my chief ministers irrespective of political party. 
one man as i told you little earlier cannot find out the solution to the problem see in a system like this in a federal character both the chief ministers and the prime minister should work joint with a joint uh, responsibility so that we are here to deliver goods to the common man to the needy person i don't think they will try to a uh, shift from the responsibility i have got full confidence in them but for the purpose of making myself sure about the end result <clears throat> i will some of the chief ministers have suggested this idea let there be a joint coordination committee all right to monitor or to make the evaluation about the performance and find out the real benefit whether reach the beneficiary or the common man i will try to monitor myself under the direct supervision of the prime minister or pmo's office i will have a missionary to go to the every state once in a quarter and find out the about the field progress not the expenditure on money side that is not important for me mr prime minister one of the worries which the people have in their mind is and it's pretty widespread and i'm sure you are aware of it whether your government can be stable this is mainly because it is dependent on support of a large number of parties and also on the support from outside of the congress party you said earlier congress party is not going to betray you but the experience has not been uh, others others have experienced totally a different kind of congress party which pulled the rug from two other governments and brought it down and they have been in power most of the time since independence except for short breaks and congress party is not used to be out of power cannot that situation arise again and they can bring down your government or create instability please when please please let me make myself clear to all those people who express this doubt the mandate of the people itself is our coalition government what has happened earlier there is no question of any comparison let us, let us understand this point right the mandate of the people is for a secular friend and today the nine or 10 political parties was forced to take a decision to form the government because the congress itself has come out categorically that we are not going to support bjp and we want to support the third friend yes but the political and parties often forget the mandate which which has been given by the people no it's for, the i don't forget i that. don't think uh, i don't think today nobody is going to betray the people's mandate the people's mandate is for a coalition government coalition secular democratic government today when the people have given the mandate i don't think there will be anybody we can dare to betray and that's why i made it very clear there is no question of such fear in my mind and there should not be any fear in the mind of the common man or the public that's why i must tell very frankly not only inside the house not mere passing a resolution giving a letter to the president of india not only inside the house but also outside the house the president of the congress and the former prime minister has made it clear this government is strong compared to even to rajiv gandhi's government because 193 is the united front the membership and 140 is the congress membership it comes to 330 33 that's why he has made it several times clear both inside and outside the house that there will be no question of any instability are you having problems in managing this coalition in both in the context of formation of policies or making appointments or uh, in uh, in your uh, cabinet making i will tell you very frankly 
there is no question of any pressure from any quarter let us be frank on this issue there is no question of any problem about the programs the common minimum program which is universally accepted i'll tell you not by mere nine not ten political parties even i must draw the attention of the the people at large that almost all the editorials of the prominent papers barring highlighting one or two commissions and commissions overall there is a welcome on the common minimum program and this program is not going to create any hitch this program which is the guideline for me I will work within the ambit of the program. Won't the Congress be doing backseat driving, being outside no. power structure I'll and then you, dictating? I will tell you very frankly, till today, there is no such attempt from the Congress side. No. What about within the coalition partners? There are two uh, major issues which came. One was about the wage structure of the government, of government implies the economic program. And you had to make sudden amendment because the Communist Party Marxists protested. Then you have come out with petrol price uh, hikes, I, I and there were protests both from the Congress Party from outside and from among the co coalition partners. And you had to make some revision, at least for the diesel. No, no. may I tell you very frankly? In the the issue of this uh, so-called administered price on oil pool account. even in the past even there is monolithic party one party rule the administered price what was announced or some of the taxations what was announced in the budget when once it has been discussed on the floor of the house or outside there was several instances of revising to the demand of the people there are i can quote any number of instances i will tell you very to the extent of 30% 25 no, to 30% just once again just, just once only on one item after knowing the feelings of the people we wanted to have the revision in diesel product where we have taken the decision to give 30% rise you brought it down to 15% that is 50% reduction but the housewives are pretty upset about the cooking gas i do agree i know their feelings those who are using scooters or cars no, they're upset I, about I the petrol agree. price i do not want to shirk the responsibility of try taking the, of the my government taking the decision they must also cooperate with me even after this revision we are giving 62 rupees 55 paisa subsidy on gas cylinder the increase is hardly 26 rupees i know that even that it is overburden knowing full well i must also place the facts before the public we have to clear the dues to the tune of 6000 crores on the oil pool account itself which was i don't want to blame the previous government this is in not one month i have created this situation now if i don't clear this dues if the supply is not constant then there will be lot of problem going to be faced by the the petroleum product the users of petroleum products and the gas uh, cylinders if there is no regular supply because of default in irregular payment in clearing our dues much more serious problem is going to crop up when once the shortage is there the non supply of these products and this year alone the on oil pool account itself we have to clear the bill to the tune of 27000 crores on import bill last year is about 22000 crores our projection today is 27000 crores under this situation i with folded hands i request 
the people who are today have been little taxed that is those who use petrol or their scooters or their cars or my sisters who are using the gas which have to share little more burden they should also i think they will understand under what circumstances this government has taken the decision i need their cooperation but the other task other task is much more bigger task i cannot support from the general budget for this oil pool account there is no budget to support and i have not taken the decision to even increasing to increase one paise on kerosene product because that is poor man's product which is going to be used by a common man slum dwellers villagers poor people i not even touched that area where even the proposal was there even after this i must carry the burden of about 9 to 10000 crores really even after this praise i so my countrymen should cooperate to overcome the situation what is prevailing today mr prime minister you visited kashmir on uh, saturday so after several year a prime minister has visited kashmir how do you assess the present situation i must tell you very frankly my purpose of visit to was to see that the flood affected area first at the same time i used the opportunity to meet all political parties and one major development which i could see which i am witnessed is people wants peace people wants peace i stress on this point today every political party with one voice they said we want election early election to assembly and we want our own government to be established to further strengthen the peace in the valley so when are you going to hold the assembly elections i am going to hold the election very soon tomorrow i am going to meet all the leaders of various political parties and i think when i move the bill for the extension of the time there is short peace extension extension of the president's rule president to mm-hmm. i will simultaneously announce the date yes. i am not going to now discuss about the details on the issue of autonomy whether the former prime minister has said about the greater autonomy or the present defense minister has said or the Uh, the all uh, our uh, united front uh, the common minimum program has said about the autonomy to discuss these points it is more credible more advantageous to discuss with the elected government it all yes. depends upon how the elected government wants if they want to involve the other political parties which may not enter the part the assembly at that time it is up to them so first of all elected government will have the more uh, uh, this is a people's mandate to discuss on such vital matters i will take their take them into confidence at that time if it is necessary to take the other political parties if they have not got any representation inside the house if the elected government wants them to involve then i will try to cooperate with the elected government according to their wishes do you have fear the militants might disrupt the process of elections assembly elections in my opinion even some of the militants uh, leaders have realized that peace is the only solution for the prosperity of jnk today that's what i have noticed there's a change of heart mr prime minister uh, the pakistan prime minister benazir bhutto sent a message somewhat surprisingly conciliatory when you took over as prime minister you replied uh, in very positive terms is it going to lead to the talks between the two countries and if so at what level see first of all i would like to make myself clear this government ambition is the desire is we wanted to maintain the cordial relationship with all our neighbors whether it is pakistan whether it is nepal whether it is whether it is uh, bangladesh and i will tell you very frankly after i received the message when i assumed the office of the prime minister i replied 
let there be a dialogue between the foreign secretary's level, external affairs secretary's level, and then if need be, we will meet. And I am waiting for the further re reaction of the Pakistan. Are you hopeful for a positive reaction? What are the sure. indications coming from there? I, I, I'm not going to have any um, doubt in my mind. It is the way in which they try to come out in their message to have a, to begin a new era about uh, the friendly relationship between the two countries. I don't think they will go back again. And I will tell you, I have already written to them that let there be a discussion among the secretaries, the official level discussion, then that will pay the way for further discussion. I think we will try on those lines. Mr. Prime Minister, I would like to draw your attention to what has happened in Geneva on the CTBT question. India has not signed the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. We have already made our point very clear on that issue. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you very frankly, there is no question of change in our stand. That means we have made it very clear. That means we are not going to sign no. when the conference resumes yes, in Geneva. Yes, the stand is not going to be changed. Now, are you anticipating pressures from Whatever the, may be the, the nuclear weapon states on India uh, if we any, don't sign? Any pressure from any quarter, any pressure from any quarter, so far as the security of the country is concerned, there will be no compromise. Let there be any pressure, I will withstand that pressure. So there has been impression in the country for quite some time now that we have gone slow on missile programs, particularly in reference to Agni and uh, Prithvi missiles program. There is no question of any misapprehension. I have given free hand to my scientists. And I will tell you very frankly, they will proceed with their job without any interference on political side. I only try to cut short my listing. There is no question of interference due to pressure from anybody. Will you provide enough money for it, for these programs? No, whatever, uh, see, the minimum requirement is there. Within our limited budget, we will try to provide because we wanted to reduce the defense budget as far as possible, as far as possible. But at the same time, one word I would like to say, even with our resource constraints, I do not want to have any type of the problem to protect the country's security, even the resource constraint. I'm Having the problem, I will take care of the requirement. Mr. Prime Minister, there is a widespread concern in the country about the growing corruption in, in, our, in our political and administrative system. What exactly you are going to do? And you I, have some I, I, I totally agree with you. There is no question of any two opinion on that. This is the art of the day. That is why in our common minimum program, we have already promised the nation that we are going to bring Lok, Lokpal bill, wherein the Prime Minister also will be involved for subjected for the inquiry and in the current session itself, I will move the bill and see that this bill is coming to force very soon. What are you going to do about some of the prominent cases like Urea scandal and Chhatra no, Mukti Morcha scandal? No, I tell you very scandal. frankly, I have already made it clear, there is no question of any political witch hunting. There is no question of political vendetta. Whatever the issues, scandals, the investigation agency is there, the law is there, it will take its own course. I am not going to interfere in the inter investigation agency. I will act in accordance with the law of the land. Including about Chandra Swami and his whatever friends? Whatever it may be, whether it is A or B or C, I am not going to take things on the basis of the personalities, on the basis of the merits and demerits, it will take its own course. There have been suggestions in, during the last few months that the Central Bureau of Investigation, the CBI, that should be made autonomous from the 
decision makers so that they can they can <laughs> they can pursue the investigation without political interference when we are going to introduce a new bill lokpal bill what more you want there is the matter when you are going to introduce a lokpal bill which has been the demand of every political party there is the matter they must have the belief in their own system which they are going to create in the next parliament Mr. Prime Minister, are you really worried about the way political system is going from from uh, bad to worse, and people are feeling I quite do concerned agree. about it? I do agree. I hundred percent agree with you. I hundred percent uh, share that feelings. The standards, the values, is deteriorated, deteriorated to an irreparable situation. Now. there is no single individual can restore this damage the day was there and the father of the nation gives a call the whole country used to stand behind him today who is the top leader i don't think any top leader in this country have got that much of credibility i'll tell you very frankly my humble opinion when i want to share with my countrymen i do not want to have any fear there is no such tallest leader in this country so why we don't have tall leaders and now no 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 i am tell you very frankly who or may claim that i am the tallest man i am sorry to say this today the people in various walk of life whether it is the people who are in public life people in the fifth state that is our the media the people who are in bureaucracy people who are in judiciary we should all we should all collectively try to restore back the what the damage that has happened to our system collectively right thing okay. people should work in the endeavor and find out some solution to the present crisis there have been suggestions that there should be national government in the country so that everybody should cooperate and this uh, this crucial juncture Are that, you in favor of that kind of suggestion? <laughs> I am not for or against. I will tell you very frankly what is the methodology. What is the the process for a national government? How? See, our forefathers when they gave such a sacred document our constitution, all these safeguards they have taken because the way in which we handled this for 48 years we are responsible for this type of political confusion if you try to restore back the what the fall in our standards i am 100% sure that the very system under our constitution will deliver goods there will be no problem there is no need of any change in the present system Thank you very much Mr Prime Minister for sparing so much time for me. I must equally thank, thank you. you for having given me the opportunity to share my feelings with my countrymen. It's the right opportunity. I'm really happy. Thank you very much.